What's up guys? This is Andrew Lai from Quasmire Airsoft and for today's episode Sniper Rifles Use the vantage point south of the road. This should give you a clear view over the exchange. Make sure all targets are present. Feeling. change anything maybe but it's a start
Some of you asked us, are you guys a GBB only channel? What are you? An idiot sandwich. And nope, that is definitely not the case. There are so many guns that we want to review. And finally, for today's challenger, we have a special one running on spring power instead of gas blowback. Yes, it is the ICS Tomahawk sniper rifle. And I have to say, I'm super excited to test this one out. Woo! Oh, got it. All right. Hey y'all. Okay, now for the hop-up test. We will adjust the hop-up dial all the way down so the rubber creates the most friction to the BBs and load the different weights of BBs from 0.2 gram to 0.48 gram. And see how heavy can this ICS Tomahawk lift. Right before we begin, I want to talk about one of my favorite part of this gun. That is the hop-up chamber and how to adjust it. I like the regular hop-up chambers. Either it is TDC or like the SRS A1 or A2 or the PDI VSR10 hop-up chambers that uses two side adjustments. The ICS Tomahawk went a step ahead, they use the three side adjustments. Basically, this type of hop-up allows you to do the fine left and right adjustments through the right and left screws. And if you just want to do the easy adjustments, just roll the TDC hop up located right next to the magazine. Zero point two. All right, cool. Brandon, you ready? And the hop up is adjusted to the to provide the most friction. Let's see how everything turns out. Zero point two. Zero point two three. Zero point two five. Zero point four a gram. The way you like it. Zero point four a gram. <laughs> no surprise. The ICS Tomahawk receives a super icon on the hop up test. However, though there's uh, one downside on this hop up chamber. It is there's there's no stop on it. So if you spin it too tight, oh. it's gonna jam the gun more. Hear the difference? Okay, let's spin a little more. Now it jams. Did you hear that? So, when you run into that kind of situation, just you can uh, decide to, you know, kind of take out the magazine and then like drain the BBs out. But um, uh, I think for this case, I would just loosen the dial, like a few clicks. This time it's gonna shoot two rounds. Yeah. That will happen for sure, so I need to let you guys know that. And here's my little tip that I do with my SRS and ICS Tomahawk. The most important part when it comes to hop-up adjustments, having the bucking adjusted to the center is crucial. So usually what I do, I would adjust the hop-up to where I think it is lifting okay, and I would take the butt plate out and pull out the bolt and do my fine adjustments while inspecting the hop-up contact from the back. This really allows me to make the most out of those fine adjustment hop-ups. But if you are feeling lazy, just loosen the two screws and use the TPC. Coming into the grouping test, we will set our target at the range of 20 meters and test out the accuracy for each weight of the BBs and see how small the shot group is from our ICS Tomahawk. We need more hop. Yeah, it's working. All right, let's do it. Okay, now the grouping test. The lightweight BBs like 0 0.2, 0 0.23, 0 0.25, 0 0.28 just had unstable shots. Apparently, we run into some feeding issues with uh, with yeah with this particular magazine. I'm not perfectly sure if it happens on this one. So um, uh, yeah, I think I will test it out because this one, yeah, it's it wasn't feeding that well. Swap to it. Yeah, see, look at this one. The BB is in there. It's not coming out. You have to like tap it. 
So yeah, that's a problem. I see us try to fix that. But after 0.3 gram BBs, I gotta say hitting a face size just like a breathe. Overall, this rifle shoots highly accurate with 0.3 gram BBs and above. Yeah, I'm feeling strong. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And the grouping score is made from 0.4 gram BBs, receiving 9 points. Alright, right now we're gonna do a small test. It's another small energy test. From the previous episodes, we forgot a terribly important test. The joule output. And based on the collected data for the muzzle velocity on each weight of the BBs, we calculated that 0.2 gram had 1.77 joule kinetic energy, and 0.4 gram had 2.33 joule kinetic energy. But surprisingly, the largest energy output was made by 0.4 gram BBs. So we're gonna test out the energy output by shooting some balloons over there. According to Brendan, he wants some actual effect. So we use this, the corn powder. First, grip the rip, spread it, wide open, load the powder, blow out the balloon, and done. Okay, the gun is loaded and yeah, it's on and I mean, press it. Recording, Brendan, let's go. Zero shot at 0 0.2 gram BBs. Seriously? What? Like, it didn't even penetrate shit. Okay, let's try it again, okay? The gun is loaded, it's recording, and uh, let me press on that. Three, two, one. Recording! For the second round of test, zero shot again. Oh wow, it, 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 it just bounced off. Okay, so that's a no. very small amount of energy. That's, that's a no. Very small amount. 0 0.48 gram. Recording, ready. 0 0.48 gram. It turned out the 0.4 gram did have some strong kinetic energy. Oh, well, this time it popped something. Yeah, that's. The and God, that that corn powder looked nice. So yeah, take this information and use it responsibly. Coming in at the range test, we will shoot Jimmy at each distance from 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters, and so on. Then we will mark the effective shots and see the maximum effective range out of this tomahawk. Fired in three, two, one, go. As you can see from the trajectory graph, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 gram BBs seems to have the effective range at 50 meters. It seems like the master mod hop up bucking and barrels. Uh, it only like suits heavy weight BBs, but for like lightweight BBs, it is hard to adjust. Like uh, it's it's very sensitive. And followed by 0 0.32 and 0 0.36 gram BBs. 60 meters seems to be their maximum range. Last but not the least, heavier weight BBs from 0 0.4, 0 0.43, 0 0.45 gram could hit Jimmy's predictably at the range of 70 meters. Don't miss out the 0 0.4 gram BBs. All five shots landed at Jimmy's tummy. And effective. Apparently, the effective range of this tomahawk is 70 meters, receiving super icon. Right inside this box, Got the TNT M170 spring. 
Oh yeah, because I know you guys, I, I play snipers too. I mean like the first thing we swap out on the sniper rifle, first thing, the orange tip. Second thing, the spring. And here, I will show you a quick tip how to uh, swap out the spring. So first, make sure that you take the magazine out, there's no BBs inside, or sometimes you don't even need to do that. Just make sure the gun is not cocked. Install the spring. What you need to do is uh, you can grab any, any kind of spring, pop the pin out, okay? This pin is out. That's the butt plate. Just tap it. Now you can take the butt plate out. And Brendan, you might need to come all the way here. <coughs> right. As you can see, there's this thing right here. Just kind of push it a little bit, twist it, and pull it out. Now you can take the spring out. And then for that case, M170 spring, tuck it back in. This one, it might be slightly... You gotta like push it inwards and make sure it locks it in place. Once it fits in place, just put the butt plate back on, tap it, and you're good to go. Pass. Oh, oh. all right, now, now we're talking. From the side-by-side -side view, you can see with TNT M170 spring, the BB traveled a bit faster to hit the target. Also, more accurate. But make sure you follow the fuel rule and regulations. Don't hurt anyone unless they want you to. This weapon, sir, it will kill. kill, kill, kill. kill. Now the rate of fire test. Nope, that's switched to how much time we need to reload and fire in the round. All right, some of you guys might be asking like, how fast can we fire this gun? And uh, to answer your question, we might do a little test. See how fast. I can fire this gun. You guys ready? Ready. Okay. Fire it in three, two, one, go. As you can see from the slow mo, I spent 1.5 seconds racking the bolt and pulling the trigger. And the funny thing was, I surprisingly switched to my index finger to the middle finger at the follow shots. <laughs> the ergonomics of airsoft sniper rifles does a huge role when it comes to pulling the bolt. For instance, VSR-10 had a much longer support which makes pulling the bolt really easy and fast. In comparison, the SRS had a much shorter support in which resulted in a much more unnatural pulling action. The Tomahawk lands somewhere in between, in which it is not that hard to pull the bolt and you can still pull it naturally. But Brendan think it is hard to pull. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> but nope, the ICS Tomahawk do have the potential to fire and reload fairly quickly, probably the fastest in the market. And this has to do with the awesome ergonomic design behind it. Gas leaking, that's not a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew Live. Andrew Live, Andrew Live. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I still remember the good old times I used to work back in ICS. And I remember the first Tomahawk study model was made out of those ICS rifle boxes. We printed the design and just cut it out and see if it feels nice in the hands and do the modifications according to our feelings. So, in some ways, you can say this gun was designed for me. One last thing, the large magazine holds 50 rounds. Basically, you won't need to worry about reloads for a while. But if you do, and while you are aiming at someone, you can just do this. But the magazine does tend to jam sometimes. You have to like, tap it. Also, the mag releasing spring is way too weak. The mag falls out easily when it touches your vest.
for the consistency test, we will set our tomahawk into the quad chamber and set the temperature to low, medium, and high. Fire 10 shots and see how the muzzle velocity changes. Okay, for this case, um, uh, you might be saying this is overkill because uh, to be honest, even I think it is overkill because to me, I think uh, spring power sniper rifle is not, the temperature is not gonna do any difference to it. So, but Brendan insist on the test. So we're still gonna run it and um, yeah, put it inside the chamber. Now the temperature, I think it's um, it's about right. Ready? Let's do, whoa. Oh. Oh. Okay. 10 shots and see what happens. Let's take a look at the result. The average velocity was 134 meters per second, and the maxima minus the minima was 2.8 meters per second. And followed by the normal temperature, 10 shots average was 132 meters per second. And in high temperature, the average velocity decreased to 130 meters per second. Shooting speed consistency had an average of 2.3 meters per second difference, receiving 7 points. Originally, I was not expecting the spring-powered sniper rifle could be affected by the different temperatures, but apparently the BB did gradually speed up while as the temperature drops down. And here's our theory. The force is the same on the spring-powered sniper rifle in different temperatures. Based on thermal expansion when the temperature is increased, it is generally increased in the volume of the hop-up rubber. A fractional area of gas pressure would be decreased in which drop down a little bit of BB output velocity. On the other hand, when the temperature is decreased, the hop-up rubber would become smaller in which increasing a fractional area of gas pressure, giving the BB higher output velocity. Quite a phenomena. I did not expect that at all. Another cool part about this gun is how modular it is. This gun basically can be divided into a few main parts. There's the mainframe, the chassis, the barrel, the magazine, the bolt, and the butt cover. To take out the barrel, just loosen the two screws and spin the unlock dial and pull the barrel out. The butt stock can be removed by pulling the pin out. And with a simple tap, you can take the piece out. And to install the parts back, just repeat the same process, but I would recommend doing this for the best air seals. The design was inspired from Desert Tag SRS sniper rifles, and gotta say, I still love mine till today. This type of design really gives the players the opportunity to easily take apart the gun and do different kinds of upgrades. So far, I don't see any upgrade parts out of ICS. So maybe it's time to push on it too. The final score of the ICS Tomahawk was 9.5 points, but do know the score is higher because it did not cover the gas efficiency test. Right off the box, this gun gave me such a strange feeling. It felt like yesterday I was just working on this gun with my ICS colleagues, and all of a sudden, this gun is out there in the market, and I'm the guy receiving it. I have to say, not bad ICS, the Tomahawk idea was nicely achieved. The overall quality of the gun is great, and the bolt is smooth right out of the box. And with the modular design, there is just a wide opportunity for aftermarket parts. Moreover, the 60cc air volume will provide this gun quite some air to project heavyweight oh, beams. Think it's ready. The ergonomics is great which allows the shooter to remain on the target while reloading and pulling the bolt. If you ask me about the complaints, my complaints would be there's just simply too little upgrades out there in the market, and I'm not a huge fan of the stock hop-up buckets. It only like suits heavyweight BBs, but for like lightweight BBs, it is hard to adjust. As well, throughout the test, we ran into some mag jamming issues, which the BBs just did not feed that well. Not perfectly sure if that's only happened to mine or it's just a design problem. I was hoping the design can be more foolproof, 
since aiming the exact spot to insert the mag just doesn't seem that ideal. However, I heard some studios have begun making all those tomahawk accessories already. I will for certain purchase those. Do we recommend this gun? Yes, I'm Woo! confident this gun will Got be great. Alright! See the powder? It should be floats inside. <laughs> and there goes the powder. This Alright, that's it for the episode today. Hope you guys liked our first sniper rifle review video. And I really enjoy seeing my idea coming true and actually get to review it. So make sure you guys click the like and subscribe button and most importantly, the super thanks button. With your support, we get to do bigger projects for you guys. So make sure you let us know what questions you have, whatever that you need help with. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming videos.